This year, Damien, uh, season three, Damien said at the beginning of it, he said, I, I really want to direct. And I said, fine. And Amanda said, fine. We really, we support that completely. Uh, the problem is Damien doesn't have any time to direct because he's always writing scripts. Um, and this year we sort of said, okay, well, let's do it. Let's make it you know, the second to last show because then you're going to have time because all the scripts will have been written. The appeal of directing was simply to face one of my biggest fears. It was, uh, I, I made it, I kept making a joke, which people thought was a joke, but I was actually being sincere, which is that, um, you know, for all the many, many, many years uh, I've been working in television, you know, I used to ride my dinosaur when I was a PA to the set. Um, I always was terrified of directing. I, and I think it's just because it is the ultimate kind of choice you can't go back on situation. You, you, you get to a point where you make choices and if they're wrong, the, the consequences are quite deadly. In a script, you can go delete, rewrite, everyone gives you notes. Like you can't say, let's put the camera here and run the scene, then everyone gives you notes and go, well, that didn't quite work. Let's just try it again from a different point of view. Uh, and so all the safety nets are kind of gone. I think it was just important as far as, for me as a writer and producer, to see exactly down to the minute details what happens when you write, you know, uh, a group of uh, monsters enter a room and start playing cards and how crazy that is to shoot in our time and budget that I had to learn something from the ground up, which is putting, to, you know, breaking down a script and telling the story with pictures as opposed to letting someone else make the choices and simply kind of guiding them through that process. I've been supervising directors without directing, so it's important to do this step. You know, this isn't Hollywood. This is our world. And in our world, it, you're, we are expecting each other to be well-rounded, well-experienced, and, and uh, not just keeping to themselves, you know. Uh, Amanda's become a good, a good director. Martin has become really good with writers and helping make the scripts better, and I need to get good at this. I love the challenge. I am so excited about the challenge. I'm thrilled about switching hats. Um, I love looking at, uh, at the script from a different perspective. The rules of this world are ones I made up or built, and so I don't worry about the story, or I, and I'm not really worried about the performances of the actors, because I think I, I know how to support them on that. Dame is very visual, but his strength really comes from, from the story and, and motivations of the characters and, and those kind of things. He knows so much about the story and about the characters that you'd be doing a scene and then he'd come up and really talk to you and he'd get so passionate about it. And he'd say, you know, Kate's kind of feeling like this and she really wants, you know, she really wants to get this person's attention. And, and you know, he really sort of understood the characters in a way that I don't think a lot of people do. You know, in the heat of battle on location or on set, you're able to make choices where you go, look, if I change this line here, uh, you know, the story will still make sense. And, uh, you know, not, not doing that without talking to the writer who wrote it, but as a writer as well, I can understand how the scene affects the structure of the story, uh, I think, a little bit more instinctively because I was there when they broke the story and saw it in outline form and all the different drafts, and so... I think it's more the technical side of doing justice to it technically and doing justice to it in the way it's shot. He would call, you know, middle Sunday afternoon, go, I'm just going through the scene, and, and, and he'd talk about cranes, and if I'm going to put my crane in this room, because it's the same sort of setup as your warehouse, where did you put the base of your crane? What kind of, you know, did you use a 30-foot or a 50-foot? What did you do that? So he asked a lot of, like, sort of technical questions. Who doesn't love the romance of, you know, calling action and cut? But it's all the work that you do beforehand that matters. It's actually what happens starting today up until the time we actually hit the floor with what we're doing that matters. <clears throat> Day one of prep, we've done our concept meeting, visual effects, art department meeting. It's exciting, I love it. I feel completely energized. Uh, I love being uh, in that hot seat. Yes, lots and lots of questions to be answered. I feel great. I'm obviously very worried about how to shoot it, but we'll see what the Schedule says, the board. Okay, that's it for now. When we first started talking about it, he said, uh, I want you there over my shoulder every day, all the time. And I know that that's not good for him. And he knows it's not good for him, but it was just that, that comfort had to be there for him. But I want you there. Um, and I said, sure. 
of course, I'm having to prep my show at the same time and do that kind of stuff. But um, so he went through all the meetings and he went, he did everything. And then the first day of shooting, I was there for his first shot, and then I left. I wanted Martin to be kind of on my shoulder all the time, but he more often than not was like, "Well, I'm going home to see my kids," and he'd you know be gone for the last six hours of a day, or he wouldn't be in for a crew call, and, and I'd start the day. And uh, I got the panic phone call. Are you coming down for this? And I was like, "No, no, I'm not." And he goes, "Fine, okay, I got it, I got it." Only once in a while would he come down and tweak things. And there were times where he would just disappear. And I'd be like, where's Martin? I, I, I want to know if this shot's OK. And it's like, he's not here. You have to just do it. And I would say, I was looking for you. I set up the shot. And he's like, I saw it. It was great. Don't worry about it. He completely uh, showed confidence in me. And then said to me, as an actor, I'm just going to rely on you. I'm just gonna, I know you're going to be there for me. And of course, everyone was there for him. You know, it's Damien, right? Well, working with her on set was just such a joy. She was just, you know. Every take was just, she just gave it her all. She was incredibly confident. You know, there was, she was always like checking in saying, you know, are you, are you feeling this what you want? Is this good? And, you know, um, you know, and if she thought, you know, if she even sniffed that maybe someone was trying to steer me away from a shot I, I didn't want, she'd take me aside and say, you stand your ground, you, you, you get the shots you want. And I was like, no, no, it's all good. I was all, I had a lot of people making sure that I felt like I was getting, you know, what I wanted, but I was feeling that way all the time. Uh, it is day three, and I am here with my friend and daughter. Daughter's friend, Hannah and Willem. Yo. Yo. They're Canadians. I don't know if you can tell. What's in the house? What's in the house? Okay. We'll all finish up here. So it's day three, and things are going very, very well. Uh, so far, I haven't had any very heavy days. Uh, it's been a real delight. The crew are terrific. I'm having a blast. Obviously, things are going to get much more complicated when we get into... Adam Worth's lab and over to refugee land and when the pro wrestler shows up and we film a fight. But so far, I'm having a great time. <laughs> I'm cracking up. The pressure cooker is always to get your day. And you know, I had a lot of support and our first AD, Gord McDonald, was fantastic. Gord Brahul, our DP, is just such a genius and such a, uh, an amazing guy at finding solutions um, and giving you very quickly a great-looking uh, shot and a great-looking way to shoot a scene. Um, you know, what, what was needed was a plan. You know, and everyone's like, look, make a plan, make a master shot list, you know, break down the whole script, make an entire plan. It won't be what you do. <laughs> it won't be what happens when you shoot it. But people really, you, you need it because you have to have an idea to start the conversation. When Gordy Mack was in there screaming and pulling his hair. <laughs> And say, get over here, get over here. You know, the first AD is basically keeping things, keeping things rolling. And Damien just, just give me a moment. And he'd come back and he would look at his book, see the shot that he wanted, see, see the notes that he had made, and he, because he was very well prepared, and um, looked at it. Okay. And then he would just calmly walk in back into the fray. It was really, uh, it was impressive. He was great with the actors. He never got overwhelmed, or we never saw him get overwhelmed. And that's the key. Sometimes directors can come in, and a show like this, you know, we blast through days. We, we're very, very, um, uh, I guess, aggressive uh, shooting schedules. And, and he came in, man, and he knocked it out of the park. He did a fantastic job. Never tell him I said that, ever. It's flattering that people say I was prepared. I definitely sweated it. I mean, I think that when you're working in a group and you're collaborating and you're depending on the crew to, to be their best because that's what the show needs, you have to show up ready. And so I, that's that's good. I'm glad people s sense that. I I think it was nerve-wracking for me because there's only so much you can prepare. The fact that we were under so much pressure did create some more interesting shots uh, than would have otherwise happened. You know, the scene in the tent with Thela whipping up the other abnormals into a bit of a, an angry frenzy was originally planned to be a, you know, two camera set up. And the idea is that, they were, that I was gonna have him addressing a group of people and put cameras on either side, you know, shoot it here and then shoot it here. But instead we were fighting everything as far as time and light. And so we just had Steve Adelson put the steady cam on and then just keep a camera on his face at all times. And um, I, you know, Edge has such a great uh, you know, warrior face, and it was a much more important scene to just stay on him and see all the reaction in the background. And I think it's a much more visceral, emotionally cool scene than, than to sort of uh, play it more slick. The scene where Adam is flickering in and out and then goes through his time horizon, 
required a huge amount of kind of logistical figuring. And especially since there it wasn't just him, it was all his lab equipment. We had to shoot it essentially three different ways. We would shoot it with him there, shoot it with him not there, shoot it against green screen. And so the overall effect is, is that he and all his equipment are actually there and come out of phase in the room and they come in ghostily and they all leave. So I definitely uh, had everybody who knew about VisFX on the set with me that day sort of saying, this is what we need. Directing Robin was easily the most challenging, difficult, life-shortening, you know, hair fallout, you know, just never, I never want to work in television again kind of moment. It, it's, it's a bit hard. We're very good friends. And so there's moments where you want him to uh, take it a certain direction. And he, he wants to get there, but you have to kind of put aside the sort of the, the fart joke in your head and, you know, kind of be serious and grown up in that moment. We're not good friends. We're not. Um, every time you see me talking to him or hanging out with him, uh, it's charity. It wasn't a fight. It wasn't. It was. A, it was a disagreement. The big disagreement we had was over the fight, uh, where uh, he was very upset with me uh, about t taking him out of the fight for one fall uh, and the coverage off his back. The reason that I always press to do as much of the stunt as possible, if not everything, is not only because I'm a complete egomaniac, but also because I think the more you can do as the actor of a stunt, the more stuff that, that they'll be able to cut to in the editing room because they can, they can see your face and all these kinds of things. So Damien just insisted that, you know, he felt like I was going to get hurt or whatever. Whatever his reasoning was, I don't know. I will completely stand by my choice. It was absolutely the right choice to, to have him do the entire fight. He did it three times. He fell on his ass on a back pad, you know, with no ground pads at all. Um, he wasted himself doing that fight. He'd done the, all the fight up to that, but I knew that if he chipped an elbow or cranked his head on the concrete or anything, he'd be gone for the day, maybe the, the, the following week. And you just don't take chances like that. And then all I asked was on the, the reverse, when we literally were shooting over his back onto Edge, that we use Clint. Complicating the shot was that um, there was only one jacket. Uh, this, so we had to sort of shoot the scene and then keep rolling. I had to step out of the frame and we do what we do as a cowboy switch, which is, you know, the, like he comes in and does the close and then, then I go back into the shot and, and get up. So it was just like, okay, fine. All right, uh, okay. You want, you want Clint to do it? Okay, fine. So I just sort of, just, all right, Damien, here you go. Oh, you gotta keep rolling? All right, let me just take the jacket off real slow. Give it to Clint. Um, and in, in, all, in all honesty, Clint really did an amazing job of, of that clothesline, and it really did. I mean, his feet came up in the air, and he hit the ground really hard. I, I do feel, for the record, I do feel that I could, I could have gotten there, but, but uh, you know, Clint being the professional stuntman really did a fine job. But then I spent the next 40 minutes just glaring and, and pouting and just standing off to the side of the set, glaring at Damien and, and steaming. And, he uh, he just ignored it because he knew he knew exactly what was going on. It was sort of like a you know a star pitcher bitching to his head coach and the head coach sort of going sit down and me saying I can strike this batter out and the pit, the manager saying no I'm taking you out of the game. You've pitched eight and two thirds innings sit we got a closer for that and the guy going no I want a full game full game shutout hell with you you know those are the kind of disagreements you want to have you want to have. You know, I think you want to have a director in there going, no, this is what I want to do. This is what I'm passionate about doing. And I think you want an actor who going, no, I don't want to, I don't want to come out of this shot. You know, I, I think it's better than an actor going, oh yeah, I'll just let the stunt double do it and I'll be, I'll be, you know, in my trailer, you know, drinking a latte, um, which I do quite often. But, you know, you, you want an actor who's like, who wants to be in there. And I, I think, I think ultimately as much of a pain in the ass as I was that day, I think Damien appreciated that, you know, that's what it was about, I hope. He'll dispute this till, the, till, till we're 90. He will just say, you took me out of the game just at the end and you know, you were wrong. Watch the rest of this little vignette on this DVD. I guarantee you Damien will not say, 
I was right, even though he knows I was. It's a shame. we were exactly on the same page. But there's a couple of times where he actually said something and I would go, oh God, yeah, I didn't even think of that. Wow, look at you, Mr. Kindler, <laughs> being all smart. But yeah, no, he, he did a great job. He settled into a mode of directing which I am gonna classify as scientifically as very Damien. When it comes down to it, I know that the most important thing is the story and the characters and what the actors are about and getting their faces and, you know, finding, letting letting the DP light it the right way and letting the DP find shots that he can give you that look good quickly. And so I definitely, I definitely wasn't precious about anything. I was completely open to everyone's suggestions. And my only job was to keep the story uh, on, you know, on the track. And if there were suggestions that I thought compromise the way the story needed to be told. I just said, I, I don't think that that setup's going to work. But I was never um, precious, like, I need my crane shot to move in someone's eye and out the nose. And oh, I've said this before. I mean, we all have this way of showing how we're going to shoot things. You know, Martin talks about his lenses, like, oh, this is a 65, and that's an 18. And we always laugh at him. And then, you know, he does this, and Damien does this, and I do this. So we all have our hands you know, to speak different, but the same language. It's quite funny. <laughs> when he's the most nervous is when he's the most loose. And he's joking and flying around. It's like, hey, I am not nervous at all. And he's nervous. But then when he's really comfortable, he's focused. And so you see this, this, this wave of Damien go through. And you go, that was where he was nervous, and that's where he wasn't, and that's where we got nervous, and that's where he was. And I'm seeing Damien deal with it very deftly in a way that is, it comes from years of being around sets and things like that, never having to, to sort of sit in the big chair himself to direct. But when he sat down on that, it fit him very nicely, and it, he's very comfortable with it. And I think that's really interesting, because it normally isn't like that on your first show, and especially a big show like, uh, like 320. There couldn't be a, a safer or a cooler landing spot for me as a director. I mean, with Martin helping with uh, the crew uh, uh, that we have, you know, the department heads, so talented, I'd, I'd have to really turn into a, a, you know, a, a lunatic in order for this to, you know, suck. It was a, it was a really great experience. I mean, we did, we did give him a hard time and, and leading up to it, we were just really me mo more than anybody else. But no, it was, it was amazing to, to watch the transformation from a guy who's showrunner, writer, to stepping onto the set and really just looking like a natural. He really owned it, and I think that's what you need to do. I have a whole new level of respect for TV directors. I've always respected them anyway, but now knowing the amount of juggling that has to go on, um, I feel very uh, in awe of how they're able to juggle the practical and the creative as well as they do. I'll be honest. I. I don't consider myself a director right now. I mean, I, I'm a guy, I am a guy who's directed an episode of TV. Um, you know, directors are people who have an approach and a style and and, and, their, and their their instinct. I mean, if you if you write a script and it, you know if you wrote a, a, a script and it got sold, you've written a script. But the, the 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 existence of you as a writer is still being born. And I think that it would take at least a, a two or three more episodes for me to develop a sort of certain approach or style. And Damien's no longer a virgin, everybody. There. Hey! <laughs> uh, guys, just once again, thank you for making it the best experience of my life. Thank you so much. Wow. Thank you for Way to set it. the bar. Yeah. OK. All right. Down here. <laughs> that was awesome. Good work. Good work. Thank you. Good. Thank you. Thank you. Come on inside. Hey. Who's this guy? So if I have someone else back wow, there, and it drunk. didn't suck totally. Yeah, didn't wow. suck totally. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice of you to say that to It's a 19.